so we're talking about the how can we create a system to serve to make this scalable so we can reach the the vast numbers of people who who we know need this and even you know relatively vast number of people who when they see what it is realize what it is say that I've been been dreaming of this you know I've been looking for this I you know, imagine that, that something like this should exist uh, <clears throat> so basically we need to take our our system you know that we've developed in the last 30 years and, which is all completely individualized every every uh, every product is is hand selected from what's available in the market usually from the professional uh, products that are only available through doctors but but we look at everything we source things from other countries uh, as well as the US um, and so to shift from that where we're individually formulating each program and often individually formulating uh, you know a single product out of you know dozens of, of different uh, ingredients on a case-by-case month-to-month basis how do we take that kind of individualization which is essential for the accelerated self-healing process to be optimized because your needs are different than your partner's needs or your children's or your parents' needs and your needs will be different in a month than they are now if you accelerate your healing. If you don't accelerate your healing, your needs don't change that much from month to month except we add new layers as we are exposed to stresses, whether they're physical trauma, whether it's emotional, psycho-emotional trauma, whether it's uh, chemical exposures from the environment, whether it's chemical exposures of the chemistry that's created in our gut when we're not digesting properly. All of those are happening in real time. And healing and detoxification of all those is happening in real time. And the real question in, in, in healing and health and disease is who's winning? Who's winning the battle right now? You know, that's, that, that's what determines whether your health is going up as you get older and you age gracefully and you die of old age, you die peacefully, you know, <clears throat> when the time comes, you, you're, you, you don't die, your, your biological body dies, which means your spirit has, has left. Um, and hopefully, you know, we've built a spirit that is, that, that can navigate, that can levitate, that has, by the virtue of its superconductive function and the, and the, the structure that we've created through our own thoughts and intentions and actions in life, uh, how we've faced the challenges that have come to us, we've developed this cosmic spaceship that's the spirit body that's immortal that, that has the capacity through superconductivity and, and the flow of, of electromagnetism within itself to levitate in the Earth's gravitational field. In other words, we haven't lived a life where we're solely uh, attached to material, the material world. You know, if I live as a materialist, if I really experience and believe myself as a material being, as, as actually uh, over 90%, I guess, of, of, uh, you know, of all modern scientists are as I see it, engaged in scientism, which is a, a faith belief that, that we are not living spirits, that, 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 that the consciousness is not a, a self-directed sentience, uh, but a, an epiphenomena of a bag of chemicals called the brain, and uh, that we have this illusion of free will and this illusion of, of being a, a living being, a spirit. Uh, it's uh, self-organizing, self-guiding, uh, self-developing. If we look at the universe, the universe itself has these same qualities that we see in life, in, in human scale, of, of self-organization, uh, cellularity, of the, the whole, the, the most fundamental uh, principle of, of self is self and the context of not self or other. Uh, so, and that's a cellularity. There's a space, there's a time, a space-time that's, that's defined self. There's a, a topology, a shape factor, where we start as a sphere, and then that sphere forms a, a donut shape, a torus, where the, the center of the donut is the gut tube. 
uh, and, and, and we form layers of structure within that in our embryological development where those tissue layers ranging from the deepest layer of the muscles and the, and the kidney uh, urinary tract all the way to the most superficial of the skin integument uh, which we call integrity the, the, the kidney muscle system we call the flow system because we're looking at what are the fundamental fundamental functional uh, names the functional patterns of these tissue layers because it's like an odd question to ask what are the kidneys and the, and the muscles, the striated muscles, the, the, the skeletal muscles, what do they have in common? They're kind of dissimilar on, on first look. So uh, as I contemplated that, because they're formed from that same tissue layer embryologically, there's something in common. Well, if there's that, that thing, that origin in common, there, there must be some function in common, was my hypothesis. And the answer that came to me, to that hypothesis, is that they're both about movement. Well, what do we call it? Movement has more of a digestive tract connotation in our language, so flow in the urinary tract. Flow in terms of movement of, the flow of lymph, for example, is dependent on the movement of the muscles. So the internal flow of, of removing fluids from the the, cell, the, the home of the cell, we call it the garbage collection system for the cells, the lymph system. Most tissues have that. Uh, there are exceptions, but most tissues have, have lymph systems. And those that don't have their internal equivalent in the brain or in the joints, there, there's still movement of fluid. And uh, in the body, that depends on, on movement of the muscles that are on that same layer as the kidneys from their, to, uh, their development. So um, that's a, a tangent to what we're talking about, but, but it's also an illustration of the, the map, the modeling that we've created by working with individuals in the healing process for any kind of, of uh, issue. You know, diseases are just names, they're categories, they're really concepts, they're, th they're thought forms, which like the physical body, like, like the solar system, like the, the, the galaxy, there's cellular, there, there's, there's, se there's a self, there's a space and a time definition, there's a presence of something that has coherence to it, that has self-similarity, that has self-organization, that has an internal structure that's, not, that's non-random, but is rather functional. Isn't it actually an express, the structure is actually an expression of function over time. It's an integral of function over time, as we say mathematically. It's a, I like to call it a fossil of function over time. So when we have disease, we have a fossil of past dysfunction that has still yet to be healed. So we have an imbalance in our, our, our seesaw, our teeter-totter of, of health and disease toward disease when, when, when health is not when the healing process of cleansing and regenerating uh, is not happening as fast as the damage is coming, coming in. Uh, so all it takes, because both are always happening, all it takes is to accelerate the healing processes fast enough, just fast enough, that they're a little faster than the accumulation process, and then that means those healing processes begin to get applied to the pileup, the, the, the backlog, you know, the, all the stuff that's been put in the closet, under the carpet, on the back burner, you know, waiting for the time when your body is strong and healthy enough to clean house, like it does with a fever, when your, your whole metabolism speeds up. Think of that. Your body, it's, and it's not bacteria or viruses that cause a fever, it's the immune system that causes a fever. It's your body's intelligence that's producing that effect, that response, we can mentally, we can, we can separate ourselves from, from full presence and trust in that body and on a mental level in a dissociated kind of state when the head is dissociated from the heart which integrates with the whole body. So when we're centered in the head we can have this idea, oh, fever's bad, my temperature's not right, my body 
self-regulates to 98.6. So it's, if, it's not a, if it's at 100.1, that's a fever, and I'm going to make a judgment. We, we're, we're here to learn judge not, but we, we do, we, and we have to. You know, it's, it's a requirement to develop an ego and to develop judgment in order to be able to meaningfully let that ego uh, lie dormant still. You know, to, to die to the ego in order to expand our self beyond this cellularity of this body that is essential to our becoming, our becoming who we are. We need this vessel, but to become who we truly are, we also need to disidentify with the vessel in, in, in isolation, the vessel as a limitation of who we are. When you see me now, I am actually part of you. What you see, all you can ever see, is what's part of you. You're not actually, there's the sense in which you're not actually seeing the world. You're seeing yourself, your image of the world, projected into the world. And it is actually projected into the world in the consensual reality of the world. So when you're seeing me, even though you're seeing me as an image on a, on a screen, you're also seeing me in the reality, in the space-time reality. And that's, that's the nature of human vision, that it is projected and this has been measured through remote healing and remote viewing studies, that when the healing and the viewing is actually happening, when there is connection of information, there's also connection of energy. Why? Because information is energy. Energy is ultimately information, or as, as quantum physics would, would express it. Uh, everything's energy, right? But matter is just energy, uh, and and energy is ultimately information. It's consciousness is the, the best description, the best definition. Information by itself is is nothing unless it's there's there's an observer. Like quantum, the quantum doesn't exist, doesn't quantize the the wave function, doesn't collapse as they call it. Uh, uh, without observation. So we, we're in a sentient universe, a self-observing universe. And as a fractal self, we can observe other, we can have relationship with other. Uh, that other can, can be uh, nutritive on whatever level. Uh, uh, in the senses, that would be called veridic veridical perception. When we see the world as it is, that's nourishment for our soul as a navigational entity because that's how we navigate and not bump into things and hurt ourselves and have encounter more damage. Uh, all the way to the physical itself, you know, of course, nutrients, foods that are, are, are whole, ripe, raw, fresh, local, uh, made with, grown with love, uh, taken with love and, and positive intention. Uh, these are all nourishing qualities. You know, what, what we define as the divine is the qualities of that nourishment, of, of, of truth, of life, of light, uh, love, uh, you know, the, the, the center path, the way, as it's described in, in East and West. All, we, we live in this space time of dimensionality of separation. There's the oneness of the source, the, the uh, what's called the vacuum uh, energy of the, the background, which is in a small space, there's more energy in that background than there is in all of the matter in the entire visible universe. So why we call it a vacuum is unclear. Uh, th there's those of us who prefer to call it a plenum, which is the opposite of a vacuum. So when we, when we try with the ego, when we try to control and create a vacuum to you know, emulate the, the, what we call the vacuum of space, which is not a vacuum either. There's, there's material substance, there's ions in most of the universe. The universe is 99% made up of plasma, which is ionized matter, which is matter which also contains so much light that it has a high energy state that we call ionization, which allows protons and electrons with the content of those photons to carry electricity and create magnetic fields in space. And this is how all these vortices, the, 
the the uh, Milky Way galaxy that we live in, or the or the solar system that we live in, or this spinning Earth that we live on, or every electron and proton in the body that's a, a similar spinning vortex of energy. 